what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. How you guys doing? I am exhausted. I'm finally home. I have had such a great trip. I uh, met Adrian Pietro, you can see on the screen right now at CCGS, and he is going to be the first time pro on the channel. First time, and I'm a huge longtime fan of Adrian's. He is an absolute amazing player. Uh, came in first in Phase 3 in CCGS at the very top of the Latin America bracket. So excited to have this guy on. I also went to Coca-Cola headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia, and spoke to some executives and some college ambassadors about Clash Royale, eSports, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. I'll actually show a few pictures and maybe talk a little bit more about that later on in today's video but this what you see on your screen right now is the deck that i am so excited to share with you guys it is adrian's favorite graveyard deck right now it's a 2.9 graveyard cycle and it's awesome let me tell you i've been playing it a little bit on ladder i can't play it in a challenge right now because i'm stuck in a 2v2 challenge it probably doesn't affect anybody out there besides me but i wish you could kind of exit out of a challenge uh because when i go to record sometimes and i'm stuck in a 2v2 i'm like ah whatever guess I'll play ladder. So anyway, we're going to hop into a match here by yours truly, and then we'll move on to the pro. So guys, I don't blame you if you want to fast forward three or four minutes, probably three, <laughs> if you want to get past my gameplay. But I decided I'd switch things up a little bit and show a match of my own. That way you can see an average player play the deck uh, versus the pro. So while I talk about the deck and introduce you guys to the deck, you will be seeing my gameplay in the background. So it's Graveyard Cycle. Instead of an Ice Spirit, you have an Ice Golem. Obviously, I mean, golem synergize, Ice Golem Synergize is so much better with Graveyard a graveyard poison graveyard anything than just an ice spirit it provides you that cheap glass tank to play at the bridge so here i'm going against a mortar deck oh man mortar decks are so annoying and before some of you comment i do have a mortar episode that i'm hard on work at right now hopefully coming in the next few days so that should be really cool as well i know mortar is annoying to go against but it's also one of the best win conditions especially for free-to-play players or basically players who don't have all max cards and need that uh maxed out out common win condition in the mortar so anyway back to the deck it is a fast deck this is not one of those conservative decks where you're gonna want to wait a long time to give your first big graveyard push you can execute your first graveyard push with a deck like this really early into the match basically if your opponent makes a mistake and plays something that's six elixir or more to start off the match hell even a giant to start off the match you can go opposite lane with an ice golem graveyard and just see what happens there you can see i went pretty aggressive in this match as well adrian says this is one of those decks that you're going to be putting down graveyard a lot during the match it's not splash yard where you're going to be more defensive speaking of splash yard i have juicy j coming back on the channel to talk about splash yard and how it fits into the new meta but enough talking about other episodes ash let's concentrate on this one dude all right so this deck uh, a few changes in here we have the uh a, a compared to the traditional graveyard cycle which i think makes this one better and obviously adrian agrees we have the tombstone which the tombstone hasn't hadn't seen a lot of action for quite a while but it is back in a big way tombstone obviously doing a great do a job to shut down uh big tank pushes uh good job against hog rider a good job against really a, a lot of cards in the meta right now can delay cards much longer than a uh, a cannon for example because of all the skeletons it spawns so uh tombstone back in the meta of course you have poison to combo with the graveyard you can see i'm being patient with my poison spell i'm not going to drop it immediately after i drop my graveyard i want to see where my opponent is going to drop his counters if i can pick up on a pattern that my opponent uses every single time then sure i'll drop a predictive poison but other than that you can see right now i know it's going to be a race till the end here he can rocket cycle me out so i need to go really hard here and it's going to work out again i delay a little bit on the poison i have a mega minion and an ice golem coming in the lane this is going to be great i make contact with that mega minion just barely and that is going to finish off the game for me all i do all i need to do is uh cycle to my next poison which is easy to do or my log uh because heck this is a fast fast deck so i've seen cheaper graveyard cycle decks out there and i asked adrian about that but he says he still this is his favorite graveyard deck he prefers this one it's not as cheap as like the 2.6 2.5 
five that I've seen going around, but it's much more defensively strong, more robust than your average cycle deck. With, with that tombstone, with that defensive poison, you do have those options in this deck. And of course, the mega minion added to the deck in place of what used to be minions in this deck. A lot of arrows. Arrows have re-entered the meta. You guys probably have noticed that. But in between arrows, zap, uh, poison, fireball, there's just a lot of spells. And obviously, fireball and poison are still going to work against the mega minion, but they're not going to want to do that for a straight up uh, 4v3 trade. So anyway, getting into the pro gameplay here. Adrian, you can see, guys, I said this is an aggressive deck. You're going to be making a lot of split second decisions. So along with that, there is a little bit of a learning curve to this deck, right? I mean, it's not one of those decks you can necessarily expect unless you're a really good player, better than yours truly. It's not one of those decks that you can necessarily expect to pick off, you know, in the first match or the first 10 matches you start dominating. It takes a little bit of getting used to. You're making a lot of fast decisions with this deck. You have to be very, very quick to decide what the right play is going to be. But of course, because it's a cheap deck, there's a little bit more leniency, a little bit more forgiveness if you make a mistake than, say, a big heavy beatdown deck. So it's funny, people say that beatdown decks require less skill than cycle decks. But in reality, I mean, they both, in my mind, they're both around the same skill level. The only difference is every decision you make in a beatdown deck, you have to really account for because if you make a mistake, it's much much, much, much more difficult to recover in a big, expensive beatdown deck. If you make a mistake, there's more decisions in the course of a game that you're making. So in that way, if that's what you equate with skill, then sure, cycle decks are, are a better skill deck. However, you can much easily uh, recover from a mistake made. So Adrian, good job with the skeletons, cutting that baby dragons for just a second, diverting it from that right tower. And you're gonna see, I mean, the, the beauty of this deck is, uh, although there is a little bit of a learning curve, it's, it's, every card has a purpose, right? Your mega minion is your tank killer. Your mega minion is your, I mean, it's very versatile, more than just a tank killer. Obviously you can use it behind the ice golem on offense as Adrian is here as well. It's just a very, uh, very versatile card right now. It fell off in the meta a little bit, checking in with Woody's uh, Reddit snapshot. It kind of like went from worst to, to last, right? And I think that, did I say worst to last? First to last, first to worst. Okay, Ash, dude, way to go, buddy. So, so basically the Mega Minion is on the rise again, okay? The Mega Rip Minion, because everybody's carrying arrows, as I was saying earlier, or a lot of people are that weren't previously, and a matter of fact, have you guys started seeing those decks with like two, three, or even four spells in them? They're going around. If you haven't seen them yet, you might be seeing them. I feel like ladder is like so difficult for whatever reason this uh, this season. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm kind of struggling. I I've actually started using this deck and having a little bit more success with it, but my bread and butter for like two months, the Three Musketeer deck, eh, not having a ton of success with it. I think that people have finally learned uh, how to carry enough Three Musketeer counters. So I'm struggling, but Adrian is not. So Adrian actually used this deck also in CCGS. I'll include a link to his tournament. Of course, it's all in Spanish. So if you guys might not be able to understand it if you don't speak Spanish, but if you want to see more of his gameplay, I'll certainly include that in the description below as well. So let's kind of do a play-by-play -play here. We talked about the uh, offense of the deck. You're going to be using mostly just your ice golem graveyard and then sometimes ice golem graveyard poison just be careful when you use ice golem graveyard poison because you want to make sure you hit the defending troops with the poison otherwise they're going to be coming back at you being aware and ready for the counter push is really important in this deck so make sure you're always aware okay what is my opponent going to play to counter my graveyard and can i kill it with the poison if they're dropping a Valkyrie, you're not going to want to drop a Poison. You're just not going to want to because the Valkyrie is going to stay alive through the Poison and then you're going to have a really big push that this deck, while good defensively, isn't strong enough to withstand a huge, huge, huge push coming from a counterattack after a failed graveyard, okay? Uh, and also, I should mention, if you're going against a beatdown deck with this deck, you want to make sure you push the other lane. This is one of those decks that you have to push the other lane hard and aggressively once the opponent drops that golem or the lava hound in the back so let's see how adrian handles really one of the most popular decks in the meta right now it's the bandit night witch three musketeer battle ram deck this deck is absolutely everywhere and matter of fact this has the highest win rate i believe using poison instead of fireball but either way this deck essentially the bandit three musketeers has the highest win rate 
in all of the Crown Championship Global Series. So, hey, food for thought. If you're looking for a good Three Musketeer deck and you're lucky enough to have uh, both of those legendaries, Bandit and Night Witch, you might want to give it a shot. But Adrian is not super worried here. So... I should mention, by the way, Adrian's won tons of grand challenges with this deck. Uh, he's been playing it for uh, for a few weeks now. So uh, I had him share not necessarily the last replays of the grand challenge. You might have noticed that these, this one especially is like the second or third replay, I think. Maybe in the first replay. I don't know. One of them was. But I asked him specifically to share against the Three Musketeer deck. So that's why it's a little bit earlier on in the grand challenge. Uh, so anyway, I was going to stop the battle ram here in the left with a log and skeletons. And you can see he's, he's done a pretty good job mitigating the damage but he's looking for his big opening and this is how you have to handle you have to make that aggressive play against a three musketeer player so they put down that pump and you have to punish them especially when you're running any sort of a cycle deck graveyard cycle hog cycle whatever it is even if you're playing a giant deck you want to play the giant at the bridge followed by you know minions or minion horde because you know that oftentimes this deck being the exception the three musketeer player isn't going to have that heavy direct damage spell but adrian knows he does this time again getting a lot a lot more damage than i'm sure he's comfortable with on that right lane but now he's ready for a really big push here in the right so two ice golems followed by archers Poison and Graveyard combo, making sure he gets the Elixir Pump, and he lucked out there. He also got the Three Musketeers with that Poison. So what a great Poison that was for Adrian, essentially shutting down that entire push there, that entire counter push, and that's what we talked about earlier, right? Make sure you wait a little bit on that Poison. See where they're going to drop their troops. Make sure you kill them. Had he used that Poison over to the right instead of the left, Earlier, as a preemptive play, he would have lost that match 100%. He couldn't handle three Musketeers coming at him in the other lane. So that was another good win for Adrian. It was, as a matter of fact, his second win in the mat in the, in the challenge there. But again, just asked him to play, asked him to show a variety of different replays. Uh, so here we go, Adrian this time on the top, guys. And we're going to go against a, I think if this is the P.E.K.K.A. Ram Control deck, I watched these once, but it was last night, and I'm recording in the morning. Eh, crazy weekend. Fourth of July coming up in the United States, so doing some family stuff today. Uh, so I'm trying to get this done on a kind of an awkward schedule. Uh, so anyway, real quickly, guys, I want to tell you about, uh, well, no, I want to get to this match. Forget it. <laughs> so here, I was going to tell you about my Coke visit, but uh, there's really not a lot to it. I just wanted to share a couple pictures with you guys. So I'll throw the pictures on. It, it was really fun. I gave about a 45-minute PowerPoint presentation. I felt so official. And it's funny. During the presentation, I think I started out with, yeah, guys, so I can't believe I am here right now. I think that's how I started the presentation. I was like, yeah, guys, I am a mailman, or I was, or I kind of am. Uh... Life update behind the mic, uh, part three, coming out pretty soon. A lot of life changes going on for yours truly. So, yeah, anyway. So I started out by saying that, yeah, this is uh, really weird for me that I'm in front of you guys at Coke headquarters in Atlanta talking about video games. Something I never thought I'd be doing in a million years. And then I went from there, and I had a really good time, met a lot of cr very cool people, and I'm excited about the future, maybe, of Coke Esports. So that should be really cool. Uh, more coming on that uh, later on the channel. I did mention I will have a uh, behind-the-mic uh, need-a-life update with you guys, man. It's, it's been a while, and they, they, end, they tend to get really deep, so make sure you're alone. <laughs> I thought about that sometimes. Man, am I rambling this video? This is awful. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, I don't edit my video. Videos, though I don't edit this out so uh I thought about sometimes when I made the beyond the mics that like what if someone's watching this in front of their family and I'm talking about like loss and and depression and all these serious topics man that would be probably awkward if you're watching in front of mom and dad like oh I'm gonna tune into clash with ash and watch it oh oh he's talking about oh oh that's yeah so anyway anyway I don't, why am I even telling you guys this this is crazy this is the most derailed I've gotten an episode in quite a while <laughs> Let's get back to Adrian, my buddy. <laughs> so, Adrian, by the way, couldn't a couldn't ask to meet a nicer guy. That's the cool thing about meeting all these pros in real life is really all the guys that I've got to meet, and I have a bunch of them coming on. Oxalate, congratulations on winning the North American uh, Phase 3 bracket, uh, or Phase 4 bracket, excuse me. And I will be having him on the channel in the next few days, too. Oxalate, really good player, uh, repping Hammers Esports. Beat C. McHugh in the finals there, in case you guys missed it. So, uh, but Adrian, such a really Really nice guy all the guys I've met so far have been like fantastic to meet in person it makes me want to be, be a part of more live events really for Clash Royale I'm just 
Ah, it, it's just so much fun, guys. I hope to meet you guys someday at gatherings uh, around the U.S. and around the world, hopefully. I'd really love to travel a lot to play Clash Royale and meet you guys in tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, for whatever reason, I really want to go to Germany. Never been to Germany, and that's next on my list. But anyway, that I guess that replay was all. We're going to chalk that up to Ash being Ash and just getting totally derailed. Luckily, there's no Skeleton Army or Goblin Gang in this deck, so I can't make a complete buffoon out of my deck in this video. <laughs> Okay, so Adrian Piedra on the top this time. This is the P.E.K.K.A. Ram control deck, I believe. Yes, because look, at you can see the Bandit. This is another really good control deck on the bottom right now. So we're going to see how he handles this one. I believe it's the P.E.K.K.A. variation. Maybe not. We'll have to see. But here it is, a graveyard on the counter push, and that's the beauty of this deck. I mean, it, uh, Adrian didn't tell me this specifically, but I had another pro. It might have been Kennen. It might have been Tag. I forgot who it was, but they were like, in the first two minutes of a match, when I play Graveyard Cycle, I want to get the Graveyard on the arena, like best case scenario, like five times. Five Graveyard pushes in two minutes, that's before double elixir time. That tells me, okay, it's okay to be aggressive with this deck. Defensively, you can put the Tombstone down before your Graveyard push if you don't know what else to play. Think of the Tombstone, aside from a defensive uh, weapon, obviously, it's going in a distracting structure as you would normally play it. It can also set the table for a, a stronger Graveyard push. Sometimes those Skeletons from the Tombstone can join forces with the... Uh, can join forces with the, the, the skeleton spawned by the graveyard and uh, behind the ice golem, and you can really have uh, trouble for the opponent. So uh, it's not the P.E.K.K.A. version, it's just the straight up Night Witch cycle deck, Battle Ram, Bandit. It's a pretty fun deck being played on the bottom. We've seen a few of these in recent tournaments as well. Uh, Adrian took a little bit of damage to his left tower, but he got more damage done on his opponent's right tower on that big lucrative counter push that we talked about. So Battle Ram coming in, he's going to handle this with a log. A log, of course, can prevent the Battle Ram from making contact with the tower using skeletons to clean up and distract those barbarians after the, the ram, the pencil, is down. So the opponent, pretty good value of fireball taking out the uh, the archers there and getting more damage on the tower he's targeting. And here comes graveyard push. So he's ready with a graveyard ice golem push and in the opposite lane, he knew the bandit was gonna come down right away, a predictive tombstone. And that's the beauty of the tombstone. Of course, I talked about every car that the tombstone is good at countering in my spiel earlier on in this video. And I didn't even mention the most popular OP card in the game right now, the bandit. So tombstone is really good against Bandit. can stop her right in her tracks, as well as the Knight. So that's another reason you're looking at Tombstone being used a little bit more than Cannon right now, according to StatsRoyale.com. So I like the Tombstone. If you guys are playing even a Hog Cycle deck and you're using Cannon, consider adding in the Tombstone and see how it feels for you guys. You might actually enjoy it more. So Adrian, again, able to protect his left tower, and now he's staying the aggressor. That's the beauty of this deck. Don't put your foot off the pedal, off the, uh, don't take your keys out of the ignition. I'm mixing up my metaphors, but this has been a very interesting video. <laughs> Adrian, I'm sorry if I did did you wrong, buddy. But uh, seriously, guys, I just want to give a huge shout out to Adrian Piedra for sharing these replays and his tips for the deck. Pleasure meeting you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to bring you guys, despite my uh, my ramblings. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's what makes the channel Ash, I guess, or CWA Mobile Gaming. That's a new name. Guys, <laughs> huge shout out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Make sure you check out his information in the description below. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end, especially this video, guys. It really means a lot to me. So thank you. And as always, take care, guys.